It's Wild Card Sunday on January 7th, 2007. Two NFC East rivals, the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles, have a long-fought, close game in Lincoln Financial Field. The score is tied at 20 in a very back-and-forth game. The entirety of the game relies on Eagles kicker David Akers. Both teams hope to continue their playoff run in the 2006 season. The Giants are fighting for what could be their last chance in the near future at a Super Bowl, and the Eagles are fighting for a chance to replicate their 2004 season and maybe even win a Super Bowl this time. Detmer just re-signed, puts it up, and Akers drills it. The Eagles have defeated the Giants. David Akers drills the kick, which sends the Eagles onto the divisional round, and it sends the crushed Giants packing their bags and leaving back to New York. The 2006 New York Giants finished the season 8-8, eight eight, third in the NFC East division, and they have a wild card round exit. Finishing 8-8 eight eight certainly isn't as bad as it gets. As long as the Giants keep this roster, they have a chance at making another playoff run, right? Tiki Barber announced his retirement, which was a shock to everybody. His 2006 campaign ended in 1,600 yards with 327 rushes, 5 touchdowns, and he started all 16 games, along with a Pro Bowl appearance. This was the season right off of his best season of his career, and he definitely was still in his prime to this point. So him retiring was a huge surprise to not only Giants fans, but the entire NFL. To make matters even worse, Michael Strahan was on the verge of retiring himself. In the past couple of years up to this point, he has been a ticking time bomb with retirement and seriously considered it during the 2006 offseason, but luckily for the Giants, he agreed to run it back for one more year in 2007. The future 2007 New York Giants roster definitely isn't ideal for making any big moves in the future as far as playoff appearances and so on. At quarterback, Eli Manning had a very middle of the pack season in 2006, going 8-8 eight and eight with a 57% completion percentage, 24 touchdowns, and 18 interceptions. He'll be the reason you win some games, he'll be the reason you lose some games. At running back, the future is very uncertain considering Tiki Barbin had his sudden retirement, and the Giants at this point don't have a true number one running back to look up to. Even though there are a couple of solid options at wide receiver, the Giants don't really have a true number one receiver. None of the receivers reached over 1,000 yards in the 2006 season. And the Giants' defense is very rocky to say the least, considering Michael Strahan will be entering his last year. His production most likely will worsen in the 2007 season. But enough talking about potential, let's jump in right into the Week 1 matchup, which is the Giants versus their division foe, the Dallas Cowboys, in Week 1. The Giants sadly lose this matchup 35-45 to in a very high scoring game between Eli Manning and Tony Romo. Scoring 35 points is very good for an offense to do, allowing 45 points on defense not so much, which is what ended up costing them the game. Eli Manning definitely had a good game though with 312 yards, 4 touchdowns and a pick but a 113 passer rating, so there could be something to look forward to this season with Eli Manning's performance. Giants pick up their second loss against the Green Bay Packers in a blowout win 35-13. This record of 0-2 is what most fans were expecting at this point in the season. The defense has allowed 80 points combined in the first two games, averaging 40 points per game allowed. Eli Manning was easily outperformed by Brett Favre this game, throwing for a passer rating that's about 30 less than Brett Favre. However, it was after this game that the Giants caught fire. Week 3, against the Redskins, they win 24-17. Week 4, against the Eagles, they take the win 16-3. Week 5, against the Jets, they take the win 35-24. Week 6, against the Falcons, they have a win 31-10. Surprise, surprise, they win again against the San Francisco 49ers 33-15. And ending their six-game win streak, they have one final win against the Dolphins winning 13-10. Just like that, the Giants take their record from 0-2 to 6-2 in looking as likely playoff contenders. Exiting the bye week, though, they would be much more shaky than their early hot streak. Coming out of the bye week, they would take a loss to the Cowboys 20-31. 
Then following that, they would get a win against the Lions, 16 to 10. Followed by another loss to the Minnesota Vikings in a blowout loss by 24 points, 17 to 41. Following that, they would take a win against the Bears, 21 16. And then after that, they would also get another win against the Eagles, 16 to 13. However, after that game, they would receive another loss on the season, making the record 9-5 to the Washington Redskins, 10-22. Following that, they would get a win against the Bills, 38-21, in a pretty good margin to increase their record to 10-5, clinching the playoffs. And Week 17, they burst the Brady and Moss-led undefeated Patriots, who were 15-0 at the time, and they lost in a close battle, 35-38. But this game showed that the Giants could rival even the toughest teams, and it was a preview for something coming in the future. The Giants finished their regular campaign 10 and 6. In most cases, this is a wild card, and it was for the Giants as well. They ended as the fifth seed, and they'd be going up against the fourth seed Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the wild card round. This matchup was up in the air. Most people didn't really know who was going to win this game, considering it's two low record teams making the playoffs. The Giants being 10 and 6, and the Buccaneers being 9 and 7. Ernest Graham has a one-yard rushing touchdown to propel the Buccaneers to an early 7-0 lead. The Giants were quick to answer with a Brandon Jacobs pass from Eli Manning, which tied the game at 7. Brandon Jacobs would have another touchdown in the game, increasing the lead to 14-7 on an 8-yard touchdown run. One of the larger moments of the game is when the Buccaneers kick returner fumbled the ball while the Giants were up 7. This was a huge momentum shift in the game and allowed the Giants to kick a field goal to extend their lead to two possessions. Eli would then throw to Amani Toomer for a four-yard touchdown, extending the lead to 24-7, for the most part winning the Giants this game. Jeff Garcia would throw a six-yard touchdown pass to Alex Smith to make the score 14-24. However, it was too little too late. Jeff Garcia threw a pick to R.W. McCorders on the sideline, which was originally ruled as incomplete, but after a view, seeing that it was a nasty toe-tap interception, it was called an interception, which sealed the game for the Giants. Manning and the Giants completed their first test. They showed that they could beat a playoff team of similar level to them, but the real challenges were up ahead. 13-3 Cowboys in the divisional round, who keep in mind have 12 active Pro Bowlers on their roster and have beat the Giants twice in that regular season. Only three minutes into the game, Eli Manning throws to Amani Toomer. He breaks a couple of tackles and takes it all the way to the house for a 52-yard touchdown, putting the Giants up 7-0 early in the game. A great five-yard touchdown pass by Tony Romo to Terrell Owens ties the game up at 7 with 14 minutes left in the second quarter. Marion Barber pounds the rock in from a yard out, giving the Cowboys their first lead of the game, 14-7. The very next drive, Eli Manning orchestrated the offense quickly downfield to get in a second touchdown right before the end of the quarter to Amani Toomer for his second touchdown of the day. After a full third quarter with no touchdowns scored on either side, Brandon Jacobs has his third rushing touchdown of this postseason with a one-yard rush to put the Giants back on top 21-17. The Giants would stop two more Dallas drives, which leads us to the final attempt by Dallas to drive down the field, only for a throw to be picked off by R.W. McCorders once again for his second game ceiling interception of the postseason, as the Giants move on to the NFC Championship against the Green Bay Packers, led by Brett Favre. It's January 20th, 2008, the day of the NFC Championship, the Packers and the Giants clash off in Lambeau Field with a temperature at negative one degrees Fahrenheit with 12 mile per hour winds that make it feel negative 23 degrees Fahrenheit. Giants players and fans never thought they'd make it to this moment, especially considering where they were at the beginning of the season. But here they are, creating their Cinderella story, hoping to get another upset win against the Brett Favre led Packers, who are strong favorites in this game. The Vegas line had the Green Bay Packers at minus 7.5, which shows how much everybody was favoring the Packers to win this game. Could Eli Manning pull off another gargantuan upset against a team that beat his team earlier in the regular season? Only time would tell. 
The game started off with a low scoring first quarter, with Giants kicker Lawrence Tynes kicking in two field goals, one from 29 yards out and one from 37. But after the Giants created their 6-0 lead, the Packers offense was very quick to answer, with Brett Favre throwing a 90 yard passing touchdown to Donald Driver. There was another large lull in scoring from the second quarter. Mason Crosby kicked in a 36-yard field goal, which was the only score from that Donald Driver touchdown to the next touchdown in the third quarter. Brandon Jacobs pounded in a one-yard rush that gave the Giants the lead again 13-10 against the Packers. However, Brett Favre led a quick two-minute drive and found Donald Lee for a 12-yard touchdown in the end zone, quickly giving the Packers the lead back 17-13. In a very back and forth fashion though, Eli Manning responded with a quick drive of his in three minutes, handing the ball off to Ahmad Bradshaw for a four yard rushing touchdown, giving the Giants the lead once again 20-17 in a very back and forth game. With 11 minutes left in the fourth, Brett Favre leads a drive down the field goal range and Mason Crosby kicks the field goal in from 37 yards, tying the game at 20. Eli Manning then leads a drive of his into field goal range. Lawrence Tynes kicks it and hooks it left in a gargantuan miss this late in the game. A bad punt by John Ryan would set the Giants up in very good field position, however they make some mistakes. RW McCorders fumbles it on the return which pushes back the Giants field position by 10 yards. Another back-breaking mistakes by the Giants is a holding call that erases Ahmad Bradshaw's 44-yard touchdown by Chris Snee. The Giants end up running down the clock for 4 seconds, so Lawrence Tynes kicks the final field goal, yet he misses again, sending the game into overtime. Green Bay wins the overtime coin toss, giving them possession, which could end the Giants' Cinderella story unless their defense can make a huge stop on Brett Favre in which they do. An interception by Corey Webster sets up the Giants in great position and all they need now is a field goal. Can he send the Giants to the Super Bowl? The kick is good and the Giants are going to the Super Bowl. Despite missing the two previous kicks, Lawrence Tyne kicks in the game-winning overtime kick to send the Giants to the Super Bowl, continuing their underdog story. Super Bowl 52. One of the most mismatched Super Bowls in NFL history. On one side you have the 16-0 Patriots, the best record to ever make the Super Bowl. On the other side, you've got the 10-6 Giants, the second worst record to ever make the Super Bowl. Patriots were expected to be here all season long. The Giants, not so much. Can Eli Manning lead the 10-6 Giants to upset MVP Tom Brady, coach the year Bill Belichick, and Randy Moss, who's putting up one of the best wide receiver seasons in NFL history? The Giants defense held the Patriots scoreless the entire first quarter, but it was only a matter of time before they put in their big touchdown, which is to Lawrence Maroney at the very beginning of the second quarter, giving the Patriots the 7-3 lead. This defensive dogfight produced zero points in more than two quarters. That ended when Eli Manning found David Tyree for the touchdown. This gives the Giants a 10-7 lead in the fourth quarter, surprising everybody watching that they're able to hold their own for this long into the game. However, a couple drives later, the inevitable Brady to Moss touchdown happened, giving the Patriots the lead once again 14-10 with 2 minutes 45 seconds in the fourth quarter. The rest of the game relies on Eli Manning. The outcome of the game is in the Giants' hands. They can control their own destiny with 2 minutes and 30 seconds in the fourth. They use the clock wisely and drive down the field. But it'd be no easy task against this gruesome Patriots defense that has gone undefeated this season. The first challenge of the drive arises. Fourth and one on their own 37. If they fail to convert this, the Patriots go on and complete the undefeated season. But Brandon Jacobs barely makes the first down and keeps the drive alive. On another pivotal moment of the drive, Asante Samuel drops a crucial interception that would have put the nail in the coffin for this game, giving the Patriots the undefeated season. But on the next play, greatness happens. Pressure from Thomas off the edge, Eli Manning stays on his feet, airs it out down the field, it is caught by Tyree. Eli Manning miraculously escapes the sack and airs it downfield to David Tyree, which creates one of the most memorable and iconic plays 
not only in Super Bowl history, but in sports history as a whole. And this gives new life to the Giants' final drive in the Super Bowl. Eli Manning would then throw a crucial first down completion to Steve Smith for 12 yards, and in the next play, Eli Manning lobs it to Plaxico Burris for a 13-yard touchdown, officially putting this touchdown drive in the books. The Giants are on the verge of history, about to pull off one of the biggest upsets in sports history if their defense can hold MVP Tom Brady in the final 29 seconds of the game. The Giants defense locks the Patriots receivers up, forcing Brady to throw an incompletion. On 2nd and 10, Jay Alford sacks Brady for a loss of 10, creating a 3rd and 20. On 3rd and 20, Brady runs out of the pocket, heaves it all the way downfield, and almost hits Moss down the field, but it's off his hands, creating a 4th and 20. Brady steps up, throws, downfield, broken up. The Giants have won the Super Bowl. The Giants' fairy tale like season is complete, making the playoffs as a wild card team, going 10 and 6, defeating four teams in the playoffs, including the 13 and 3 number one seed Dallas Cowboys, the 13 and 3 number two seed Green Bay Packers, and the Goliath undefeated New England Patriots. Eli Manning in the Giants' playoff run goes down as one of the greatest to ever do it. And the crazy thing is, that isn't even their last. Thank you everybody for watching this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you didn't, make sure to say in the comments what you didn't like about the video. This is only my second video and my first breakdown video, so make sure you leave any criticism or critique in the comment section below so I can improve my videos in the future. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next Keeps video.